Hello, good morning. This is Rick Pina, and I am bringing you today's word for April 10th, 2020. Guess what today is? Today is Good Friday. And I'm going to answer a question for you today. The question is, on this Good Friday, where I've been teaching Passion Week messages all week long, the question for today is, what's so good about Good Friday. When you think about Good Friday and you see all these pictures of Jesus on the cross and you see, and you remember the movie, The Passion, and and you see all the things that Jesus went through and he took a cat of nine tails 39 times across his back and he was slapped and he was beaten and he was bruised and he was scarred and they nailed him to a cross. And you're like, man, Rick, what's so good about Good Friday? Let's talk about it today. What does this mean to you today? I have four things to share with you on this morning. We're going to go to Luke 23 and 46 and then get into those four things. So in Luke 23 and 46, the Bible says, and when Jesus had cried out with a loud voice, he said, Father, into thy hands, I commend my spirit. And when he said this, The Bible says he gave up the ghost. He said, Father, into into thy hands I commend my spirit. And when he said this, the Bible says he gave up the ghost. So what does this mean to you today? Like I said, I have four things for you this morning. Here's number one. God is intentional, purposeful in everything he does. I mean, everything God does, God does on purpose. Jesus made seven statements from the cross. Several of those statements, the Bible actually says he said this in order to fulfill prophecy. This is just another reminder that Jesus's death was pre-planned. It was intentional. It was completely purposeful. Why? Because our God is sovereign. He knows all things. He's the God of yesterday, today, and tomorrow. The God of your past, the God of your present, and the God of your future. The God of your already, the God of your right now, and the God of your not yet. God is sovereign. He knows all things. Isaiah 46 and 10 says that he calls the end from the beginning. So even while Jesus was dying, our God was still reigning. Even while Jesus was dying, the Father's plans and purposes were being manifested. So by the time we get to this text, Jesus had already spoken six things from the cross, six statements, and we we heard the, the seventh statement, right? But even with that, think about the way that he even said the things. I mean, everything was pre-planned. If you look at Genesis and you look at the creation account, God created the heavens and the earth in five days, On the sixth day, he created man and placed man over everything. On the sixth day, basically, he was finished. And then on the seventh day, he rested. So then you look at the seven things that Jesus said on the cross. On the sixth statement, Jesus said, it is finished. With the seventh statement, he entered into the Father's rest. He said, into thy hands, I commend my spirit. And he gave up the ghost. Even on the cross, everything was pre-planned. Everything was calculated by God. God is a God of purpose. When you consider the fact that God is completely intentional and that he doesn't do anything by happenstance, you can apply that to your life in a myriad of ways. Let me just highlight two for this morning. The first is that Jesus' death was part of a pre-planned and carefully calculated purpose. This means that God was doing exactly what he wanted to do, even in in the middle of a situation that looked like he was not winning. In, In the middle of a situation that looked like the devil was winning, God was still working. See, that's a good reminder for us, especially when things don't work out the way that we want it or things don't work out the way that we plan. And the second point that I want to make is that because God is a completely purposeful God and because God is intentional about everything that he does, it means that you are on this planet for a reason. And that reason is God's purpose. You are not a mistake. Look at me. Let me tell you something. You are not a mistake. Now, life may not always be easy. It wasn't easy for Jesus. Life may not always turn out the way that you want it. Even Jesus struggled with the thought of the cross. But in the end, watch this, in the end, God's plans and purposes shall come to pass. When it is all said and done, God's will shall prevail. It did for Jesus and it will for you. That's good news. Number two, no one took Jesus's life and no one can destroy you. Let me talk about it. No one took Jesus's life. 
You know why? Because no one ever could. No one had the power to do so. If you read the text carefully, you will see that no one killed Jesus. Now, did they torture Jesus? Yes. Did they nail him to a cross? Yes. Did, was his back writ wide open? Did they drive a, a thorn, a, a crown of thorns into his head? All of those things are true, but they didn't kill Jesus. No one had the power to kill Jesus. The text says that Jesus gave up the ghost. That means that he released himself into death. They didn't kill him. He gave up the ghost. He willingly gave up the ghost. This was an act of his will. Why did Jesus do it? He did it for you. He did it for me. Until the very end, until the final cry, Jesus had the power to destroy everyone who thought they were destroying him. Listen, but he restrained himself. Why did he restrain himself? Why did he wait? Why did he endure this horrible death? He did it for us. He did it for me. He did it for you. Listen, Jesus faced death on the cross. And throughout the whole process, God was still God. God was still on the throne. God still had all power. And you should remember that the next time you face something. Matter of fact, remember that now, today. While the world is dealing with COVID-19, God is still God. While the, while the world is dealing with a global pandemic, God is still God. God was God before this, and God will still be God when this thing is over. When you understand that, that your pain does not lessen God's power, then you can really kind of walk with God on another level. The fact that you face tribulation in this world should not lessen your understanding of God's power in any way. As a matter of fact, it should it should deepen your resolve to release your faith in order to tap into God's grace. God's power is made available to you. You can endure everything that you endure with a smile on your face and a spring in your step and a song in your heart. You can have joy and peace in believing, even though things on the outside may be going crazy. So why? Because the grace of God is available to you to do it. But you have to release your faith to tap into God's grace. Did Jesus die? Yes, but he rose again. Did Jesus face challenges? Yes, but he overcame every challenge. Are you going to face challenges? Absolutely. You are going to face challenges on the road to your destiny, on the path to your purpose, in order for you to become the man, the woman that God has called and destined and designed and desires for you to be. You have to build up grit, determination, and resolve. You got to use your faith to access God's grace. You have to embrace the grace to become the man, the woman that you were called to be so that you can overcome everything that you need to overcome on the path to your destiny. It was true for Jesus and it is true for us. Number three, the devil lost <laughs> the day Jesus gave up the ghost. And this is really the good news about Good Friday. Oh man, this foolish devil thought he was destroying Jesus. He thought he was winning. The, the, the demons were rejoicing when Jesus was going to the cross, but they were actually helping Jesus obtain the ultimate victory. When the first drop of blood hit the ground, it sealed Satan's fate forever. I was in, in uh, Dallas, Texas many, many years ago, and uh, I was in the Potter's house when Bishop T.D. Jakes preached a message entitled The Blood Trap. And I remember, oh man, that was such a good message. It was from 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 8, where the Bible says, had the princes of this world known what they were doing, they would have never crucified the Lord of glory. Bishop Jakes called it the blood trap. It's like they thought they were getting the blood. They thought they were winning when they were spilling the blood of Jesus. But it was a trap. The, the, the blood cried out. You see what I'm saying? And, and, and listen, when the first drop of blood hit the ground is sealed their fate. The devil thought he was winning, but he was actually losing. And it, it was true for Jesus. It's true for you. If the devil knew any better, he would leave you alone. The more he messes with you, the stronger you get. See, Jesus went down into hell during those three nights and three days. He took back the keys. You know what I'm saying? He said, man, give me those keys. He took the keys to hell and the keys to the grave. And he took those keys with him when he ascended for the resurrection on Sunday. So life like Joseph, Jesus could say, the devil meant it for evil, but the father turned it around for my good. And I'm telling you that you could say the same. No matter what you're facing this morning, remember, God is still God. He's still on the throne. He still has a plan. His plans and his purposes are still working in your life. He still loves you 
unconditionally. So listen, even when it looks like he's not moving, he's moving. And even when it looks like he's not working, he's working. Even when you can't see him, I'm telling you the purposes and the plans of God are still at work in your life. You are going, when it's all said and done, you're going to be able to look back and see that the hand of God was on you every step of the way. And that is good news, my friend. Number four, as I close, here's what's good about Good Friday. Jesus took your place on the cross. Jesus paid the debt for your sin forever. Jesus took the sting out of death. Jesus robbed the grave of his victory. Jesus took the keys to, of the kingdom back from Satan. I'm saying this is what's good about Good Friday. Now Jesus, when he rose from the dead, Jesus said that he has all power. Where? In heaven, in the earth, and even under the earth. Jesus has even all power over the underworld, over the kingdom of darkness. He has all power in heaven, in the earth, and under the earth. And based on that power, he told us to go. That's the go in the gospel. He told us to go into all the world. He told us to go into the highways and byways. He told us to go based on his power. We have been deputized. He says, listen, all power, all authority is mine. I now give you the power and I authorize you to operate in my name. And that, my friends, is good news. Jesus obtained everything. He attained it for us. We don't have to attain anything. Jesus attained it for us on the cross. He overcame. Now you and I, we can overcome because he already overcame. Our job is not to make anything happen. Our job is to simply receive, believe, and maintain what Jesus has already obtained for us. And that, my friends, is the good news about Good Friday. Let's close this message out with a declaration of faith. I want you to lift up your voice and speak this over your life. Say, Father, I thank you for Jesus this morning and every morning. I will never cease to give you praise for what Jesus did for me. Jesus willingly endured the pain of the cross and he did it for me. Jesus took my place on Calvary. I now take his place in the earth. Jesus never stopped, and I never will either. No matter what I face, I know you are still God, and I know you still have a purpose. So I become the Jesus that people can see every day. I pray for the sick. I encourage the discouraged. I uplift the downtrodden. I bind the power of darkness. I honor Jesus' sacrifice today and every day by become, becoming a conduit of your love and your light in this world. As Jesus is, so am I. Nothing can stop me because nothing can stop you. I will never allow a challenge, obstacle, or roadblock to cause me to quit. Jesus kept going until the very end. He only died when he was done. And I live with the same mentality. I declare this by faith. In Jesus' name, amen. This is today's word. Please apply it and prosper. If you're not getting these messages, go to todaysword.org. Click on the subscribe button. Subscribe. Put in your email address. You're going to get all my notes in your email inbox every day for free. You can download our app. Go to any app store. Search for Rick Pina. We have a podcast. Go to the Apple iTunes store. Search for Rick Pina, Rick and Isabella Pina Ministries. Listen, go to the YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash Rick Pina. Everything we put out there, we put out there for free. We want you to receive it. Be built up. We want you to become the men, the women that God has called you to be. If you want to make a donation into our ministry, please go to RIP Ministries, R-I-P Ministries, uh, dot org, and uh, click on the donate button and all the donations in the United States are tax deductible. Listen, go into this day right now, thinking about what's good about Good Friday. Think about what Jesus did for you. This is a message you might need to watch again. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. <laughs> Sin had left a crimson stain, but Jesus washed me white as snow. That's good news. Do me a favor, share this message right now with your social media. 
I love you. Have a good, good Friday. Celebrate. Praise God on Sunday morning, on Resurrection Sunday morning, and I'll see you on Monday. God bless you.